What's happening, people? Welcome back to the Bugs Geek Out podcast. This is a movie review for John Woo's Silent Night, starring Joel Kinnaman. Just came out in cinema this week. Check it out if you are a John Woo fan. If you are a John Woo fan, you won't be disappointed. I honestly went to the cinema to support this movie, to support John Woo. Um, otherwise, you know, this is a movie that could I could I wouldn't normally wait it for streaming services or whatnot. Um, but as a John Woo fan, and I've loved his movies from his old Hong Kong movies, The Killer being one of my favourite movies, A Better Tomorrow, A Better Tomorrow 2, Hard Boiled, absolutely amazing movies. And then even his Western movies that he made in Hollywood, Face Off, uh, Broken Arrow, Hard Target, Mission Impossible 2. Massive fan of John Woo and his action style. I do think, in my opinion, he's like one of the pioneers when it comes to action movies. But elevating action into an artistic form on the movie screen and he did that with you know with a better tomorrow and a killer and another thing which i think he he kind of revolutionized or just was one of the first directors to do that was to show a lot of emotions behind the main action star and i think he done a great job with that in the hong kong movies with chai yun fat where he brought in chai yun fat an actor to play an action star rather than an action star being an action star. And, and what I mean by that is Chai Yun Fat in those movies it was able to portray the emotions behind the character. And I think that's what he did with Joel Kinnaman in this movie, Silent Night. Because this movie, and spoiler alerts, by the way, um, I mean, it's no big massive spoilers, but spoiler alerts, just in case you don't want to know about the movie. If you don't want to know about the movie, don't watch this, <coughs> come back later. But, he, John Woo, like I said, is revolutionized action movies from the 80s and it was always important for him, I believe, in his movies to show the emotions behind the, the, action, that, the action that happens in the movie and the intentions of the main character's actions. This movie was a silent movie as it was, as it's called Silent Night. The whole movie was a silent movie. There was no dialogue in the movie at all. Uh, it was all portrayed and, and expressed through music, sound effects, bullet wounds, action and guns and all that stuff uh, and most importantly facial emotions, you know, just close up on the eyes, constant tears, just the horror, the trauma that John Kinnaman goes through. So for me, look, this was like John Woo's Punisher movie, you know what I mean? It's my guy right here, Frank Castle, the Punisher, I'm always if you've seen the channel, you know me. Big Punisher fan. If you haven't seen the channel, as you can see, that was a Punisher head. For me, this was like a Punisher type movie. This is like a John Woo style Punisher type movie. You know, simple story, you could say, right? Um, his, his family, got, his kid got killed in a, in a drive-by gang, gang shoot. And then, you know, he ended up getting revenge, right? That's, that's the main plot of it. But what this reminded me of was, was an old school 80s, 90s action film. That was the main plot, yes. Um, but it was what I think he portrayed in this movie with the silence and no dialogue was what's going on in here through the emotion that he's going through, through the actions, through his, what's happening in his life um, and, and through the sound effects and whatnot. I really think he tried to take you into the mental, what went through him, the trauma that he couldn't get over, which ultimately led him to be determined enough to uh, get the revenge that he wanted. And this reminded me of the old school, like I said, the Punisher for sure. It reminded me of um, Max Payne, the video game, which was obviously influenced, the action was influenced by John Woo as well. Um, but some of those old movies, I think it's called Death Sentence with, is it Burt Reynolds, I think it is? Or, oh, I don't know if it's Burt Reynolds. I know Kevin Bacon done a remake of the movie as well. So, you know, simple like that. But I think the, the unique thing about this movie is literally the silent movie. It made a silent action movie. And it just works so well. Now, what might not be for everyone, uh, you know, my missus got bored and whatnot. Now, for me, I was, again, as a biased John Woo fan, if you are a fan, you would definitely appreciate, you definitely love what he was able to express with everything else, uh, without no dialogue. Um, and that's what I was interested in. That's what I was, I was like, I was, I can't believe you kept me engaged in about a two hour movie with no dialogue. And I think only people like John Woo can do that because I feel like he's got this visual, expression that he puts on the screen that just captivates you for two hours and is able to tell the story through you know with no dialogue 
and through just emotions and actions and whatnot. You know, what I loved about it, like I said, it was an old school movie. It felt like an old school movie. There was like a training montage, montage in it, which was just awesome. Um, one of the things I, I was thinking before I went in to watch this movie is like, how has he evolved his action based on some of the action movies we've seen? Like I said, yeah, I feel like he's one of the pioneers of, you know, gun fu and the, arti the artistic side of action movies. Then we saw, you know, loads of movies like Extraction, obviously John Wick, all these type of action movies that's come out. How has he evolved? And the truth is, he kept it John Woo. There was not, like, it was John Woo. I, I, you know, in some weird way, I thought it might have been like a John Wick type action scene. No, it was pure John Woo action. Um, you know, I, if there's one criticism I'll, I'll give it, I didn't see enough double guns. They were in it, but not as much as I, I thought there would be. Uh, but this was a John Wall style action movie, like, and I'm kind of happy that he did that because he kept it his style, um, you know. So I was thinking, what is he going to evolve it into? But hit me saying that I don't think he evolved the action. I don't think that's a bad thing because he kept it his style, which is the John Wall style of action, and I thought it was absolutely amazing. Uh, I think John Kilman done a great job in expressing the the emotions that he's going through. I mean, the first. 20 30 minutes of the movie was just teeing up like teeing up the trauma that he's going through before you even kind of see you if you see the trailer you know what's happened but before you even get to that part in the movie it just tees that all up uh, where his son gets killed and whatnot and just expresses the the, the trauma that he's going through and throughout the whole movie up to the point where you know he decides that his life's not going to go anywhere no more. He can't get over it. And, you know, he, he, he revenges the only answer. And just like the Punisher, the justice system let him down. You know, so he had to take it into his own hand. Uh, I do have to say, just similar to the Netflix Punisher show, <clears throat> there was a similarity there which I found was uh, in, in the jet, uh, John Bethel's Punisher, he always would say that um, one batch, two batch, penny and a dime, before he took a shot or before he went into somewhere, right? That was this kind of reminder and something that reminded him of his children. I don't know if he used that as motivation or whatnot, but it was always there, right? In this, he had this little musical box thing that his son liked, and that was what he kept him playing as well, which I thought was a little reflection there. I mean, like similarity things, but it was just the thing that kind of reminded him of his son to kind of motivate him to do this. Now listen, like, you know, this is a, this movie is a fairy tale world. This shit does happen, right? Shit happens in the real world. Whether you take revenge or not, some people take different paths, or whatever. But in this movie, I think he really tried to, you know, express that his life was not going anywhere, you know, and he even ruined his relationship with his wife because he couldn't just get over what happened. And that's just what trauma does. I mean, trauma, you know, like, I'm, I'm not talking like I'm an expert, but that's what I think they expressed in the movie. That's what happened. You know, same with The Punisher. You, he, he waged war on the streets because of what happened to his family and he didn't find any other solution to it and it's almost like that was the solution to his mental trauma mass murder if, if you want to pull it that way right uh, even though he's killing bad guys and whatnot uh, and I think it's the same thing with this you know he started off with being on a substance you know which most people do getting on alcohol drugs and whatnot see if you can get over that shit in your head at the end of the day it's, it's memories you can't take those memories out um, and you know, the alcohol, I guess, soothes it or puts him in a place to carry on. But <clears throat> I feel like where this movie ended up and what Joe Kellerman expressed was he got to a point where he knew that his life would never move on and revenge was the only answer. You know what I mean? Like, yes, it's a typical action movie. Yes, I get it, right? Kill your family, you go get revenge, got it. But like I said, this was expressed with no dialogue that's what i loved about it that was all that's part of the story and the the, the determination and the uh, the motivation behind that was expressed with no dialogue it was expressed with just act, um uh, emotions you know and acting of just depression and you can just tell this guy's life that's it he's got no more life his life was the child so that's what i loved about that was a unique thing you know i can't remember the last time I'm sure there'd be loads of silent movies out there, so obviously I, obviously I don't watch all the movies in the world, but just to, to, to watch an action silent movie, I don't know if that's been done before. Someone correct me if I'm wrong, if a silent action movie's been done. 
Um, but yeah, I, I, I really enjoyed this. If you're a John Wall fan, you will enjoy it, you would appreciate it. Go check it out. If you like old school action movies, I'm talking about 80s, 90s stuff, go check it out. If you're not if you're young and you just you know you've you've grown up with the John Wick stuff, you might not appreciate it as much as, as the old school fans. Uh, maybe. I mean check it out. And if you're not into action movies, then don't watch it. But I'm I'm saying as a fan, as a John Wall fan, maybe I'm being biased, but I tried to look at when I went in, I went in with excitement. And I just appreciated everything that it gave me. Uh, and maybe that's just a biased take on it because I'm, I'm because of John Wu, but I, I really love his vision. I think he's one of those directors like you know, like a Quentin Tarantino. I go in to watch a Quentin Tarantino movie because of the dialogue. I think the dialogue is always awesome in his movies, uh, of course, as well as all the other sort of stuff. But I think with John Wu, I go in with the um, with the intentions of seeing artistic action and emotions behind the character. Uh, and I feel like every one of his movies, his his main star, that is not just the main star. For no reason, there's something behind him. He's always expressing some kind of emotions, and I think John Woo's just amazing at that. Uh, there was some, was there doves? There was definitely doves and pigeons. Like John Woo's things, he's always a bit that, right? Uh, with the pigeons and stuff flying around with the doves. Um, John Woo is awesome. I, I I really feel like to do this sort of role, and I, like, I'm no actor, I'm no, I don't know nothing about this sort of stuff, but to do a silent movie and it's like your acting is in acting, facial expressions. No vocals, right? In in and then the way they set it up, you know, he gets shot in the neck basically. So they just set up the silent movie from there. <clears throat> but to take on that, it, it's all this, you know what I mean? It's all these, your eyes and how he expresses that. It's a body language from when he's depressed and he's sloping down to when he's motivated, he's got up, you know. Um I, again, I this is what I'm seeing. I'm no expert, but this is what I'm getting from it. And then also, again, it just had the typical John Wall thing, like he wore a trench coat, you know, like Mark from, uh, like Chai Yun Fat from, from, from the uh, like Better Tomorrow movies and whatnot. He wore a leather chain, ch uh, trench coat. Uh, just the typical stuff, you know, the shotgun hanging. It, it really, like I said, just felt like an old school 80s, 90s action movie, but John Wall style action movie. Uh, it, had, it ticked all the boxes for me as a John Wall fan. So I, I loved it. Really, really great. Like, like I said, if you're a John Wall fan, you must go watch it as a John Wall fan. If you like old school actions, go watch it. Uh, if you're trying to get something new from it, then I don't know. Kid Kudu was in it, he was pretty good. He was actually really good in it as well. Um, even the main villain, Howard Torres. Just just great, you know, like I say, everyone, I, I think the whole movie was just artistic. It was just an artistic revenge story um, from my perspective. Uh, what else was there? Was there anything else? No, I think that was it. I wanted to kind of, again, always do my long form sort of uh, reviews because I think that's the best way I can express my thoughts around these reviews rather than give you a quick 60 second ones. Long, long form for me is, is best to kind of go through it. But yeah, man, check it out. Check it out. John Woo fans out there, go check it out. Support the movie. Support John Woo. I can't remember the last time he done a Western movie, to be honest. It's been a while. I don't want to say I hope he comes back. Like, hoping that this is the big break back into the Western world. I don't think his action style was appreciated as much on, on in Hollywood. I don't know why. I do think Hard Target was amazing. I do think, you know, um, what do you call it? Uh, Broken Arrow was good. Face Off was amazing, in my opinion. Uh, Mission Impossible 2, Impossible 2 was great. I, I, I thought Face Off would have been, and I think it did win like awards for best action and stuff, if I remember back in the days. But I thought that would have been his John Wall's breakout moment in Hollywood. But, you know, maybe it's a good thing. Maybe, you know, you can appreciate it more if, you know, they don't just rinse their work out or whatnot. You know what I mean? Like, when he, like this movie, I haven't heard from John Wall in ages. When I knew this movie was coming out, I'm like, I gotta go see it. But I felt like maybe if he's been making movies this whole time, you're like, what's well, another John Wall movie? I'm gonna go see it. So it feels like more of an exclusive, almost like Quentin Tarantino again, who I know is influenced by John Wall as well. But, you know, Tarantino, when he comes out with a movie, it's a spectacle, you know, even with Christopher Nolan and whatnot. It's a, it's a spectacle. It's like, I'm got, I, you know, you've got certain expectations. Um, but yeah, no, listen, I think it's great. I think, what's the Rotten Tomatoes say? 61%? Um, what I meant, uh, fan critics at 55%, I think that's quite average, but fuck the critics, fuck the critics, fuck what I say, go watch it yourself, see what you think, 
Um, all right, cool. Look, I'm gonna leave it there. I think I was able to kind of express as much as possible about the movie. For me, loved it. John Woo fan, action movie, old school action movie fan. I'm all in. So if you're that person, go check it out. Support the movie. Uh, and on that note, I'm out. Peace.